Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, here we are once again. It feels very similar to 2020, rising to that extreme high when it comes to all of the hype, expectations mounting and mounting and mounting, people getting extremely excited, and then of course the crash or the down. Well, it feels a whole lot worse if you were expecting to take over the world, and then you end up not meeting those expectations. The sad reality of the situation here is that there was no red tsunami. A very weird, shocking, frankly confusing result in the 2022 midterm. And this is what I keep saying, that it's so incredibly hard to predict these elections because the polls are just wrong every single time. This time, apparently overestimating GOP support. Confusing, to say the least. I mean, I do find it a little bit coincidental and interesting that the moment election laws and election rules changed in 2020, then all of a sudden, historic election prediction trends are just out the window entirely, mean nothing nothing anymore. The state of Florida is no longer a leading indicator as to where the rest of the country is going to go, apparently, because the Rust Belt has a mind of its own. And somehow, John Fetterman manages to get elected to the United States Senate. So there was no real red tsunami, no red wave. Now the question is, where do you go from here? There's a lot of people pushing doom and gloom like usual. The doomers have arrived. There's a lot of finger pointing, a lot of hyperbolic statements. It's the end of the world is essentially the mood on Twitter right now. I don't agree with that. I refuse to feed into the negativity. So we're going to look at the good, the bad, the ugly, and we'll just have a conversation about the election. I'll let you guys know exactly how I feel about the whole thing. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So we don't have the full results because Nevada and Arizona are just doing their thing. And of course, we don't know what's going to happen in the state of Georgia with the runoff. Although if we take the 2020 election and then moving into the runoff that we had there that Raphael Warnock one. Hopefully that isn't an indication and hopefully we won't be repeating history there. But the point is, this thing isn't over yet and at the end of the day, the result is going to be the same, regardless of what happens in these Senate races. Was it a massive red tsunami that took over the entire nation? No. Was it close? Kind of. These races were going to be won or lost by razor-thin margins. Regardless, the fact of the matter is, the nation is divided and especially these purple states. They don't seem to feed into the partisan narrative, going one way or the other, it's the little things that matter. And if we're looking at Georgia and if we're looking at Pennsylvania, it's time to have a little bit of a reality check. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I've alluded to it before, but I didn't really want to feed into it too much. Herschel Walker and Mehmet Oz aren't great candidates. I've said it before, Herschel Walker isn't the most eloquent speaker. He doesn't have great political experience. He's an athlete. He's famous in the state, absolutely. Is he a strong campaigner and a strong politician. I wouldn't go as far to make that claim. Republicans did well in Georgia. Brian Kemp absolutely destroyed Stacey Abrams. Herschel Walker lagged behind. That's an indication of him not being a strong candidate. If we look at the Pennsylvania race, we've been worried about Mehmet Oz since the start. The person that I was rallying behind, I think with a lot of you guys, was Kathy Barnett. The media establishment came swooping in, destroyed Kathy Barnett. Donald Trump refused to endorse her, and so people were stuck with Mehmet Oz. And so towards the end, you kind of had to become an Oz stan. You had to push the guy because you didn't have any choice. But we maintained throughout the months that he was a weak campaigner, a weak candidate. He didn't have a good grasp on the issues. He came off unlikable, unrelatable. And to be honest, his debate performance was okay. But considering the fact that he was going against John Fetterman, who couldn't string coherent sentences together, it wasn't as good as it should have been. And that is the simple fact here. Mehmet Oz lost to John Fetterman. The GOP is not going to win without strong candidates. The candidates make the difference. A lot of people are blaming Donald Trump for the loss in Pennsylvania, but at the end of the day, I don't think Donald Trump had anything to do with this election. He had something to do with it, but he had a small effect. His endorsement track record is still pretty pristine. This wasn't a referendum on Donald Trump like the media is trying to convince you. If anything, I'm seeing the opposite. Mehmet Oz was unable to pull in working class voters in Pennsylvania. That's why he lost. Mehmet Oz is less popular in PA than Donald Trump is. The loss is sustained in the midterm election are on a bi-candidate basis. The issue is not Donald Trump. The issue is the campaigning, where Mitch McConnell is sending dollars, where the GOP is investing fundraising funds. And
and the messaging platform that they're packaging. There's no excuses here. It's not time to doom and gloom. It's the time to pick stronger candidates in these most important races. And it's time to start putting together a strong political message. You know, kind of akin to what Donald Trump did in 2016. And of course, what Ron DeSantis is doing in the state of Florida. By the way, winning by 19 points in the former purple state of Florida on a very Trump-style political messaging campaign. The issue is not Donald Trump. The issue is talent. If the GOP doesn't come out swinging with extremely strong candidates who are absolutely coherent and on the ball with the issues, Democrats will win by virtue because Democrats control culture and we're learning that's a whole lot more powerful than anything else. And so it's time to learn and move forward, not to sulk and cry and whine. It's time to figure out how to win. And look, it's not the end of the world. Was it the result that people were looking for? No. Was it a terrible result? Not exactly. Exactly. Even if the Democrats win a slight Senate majority, whether they get the 50-50 split with the VP tiebreaker, or if they win the runoff and defeat Herschel Walker and get 51 seats, again, we have no idea what's going to happen. Nevada looks like the Republicans are about to win it, but of course, it's taking forever for the mail-in ballots to be counted. We don't know what's going on there. Arizona, we have absolutely no idea. We're flying totally blind. But even if the Democrats win or retain the Senate, it seems like the Republicans are going to win a majority in the House, whether it's a more slim majority than expected. It doesn't matter. The point is, they could stand in the way of Joe Biden's legislative agenda. And now is not the time for infighting. I mean, that's a big reason why we saw the result yesterday that we saw in the first place. The fact that there's an ongoing mutiny in the Republican Party. People like Liz Cheney actively campaigning against Republicans in a major election. I mean, that's not a good look. And now the GOP establishment wants to continue this ridiculous fight. Now is not the time for infighting or to be negative. Now is the time to rally behind a coherent, consistent message, a platform, because we have direct proof that that is exactly what wins elections. In fact, that is exactly what changes the electoral map moving forward for generations. Ron DeSantis is proof of that in Florida. And if Kerry Lake wins, Kerry Lake can do the same thing in Arizona. The infighting and the blame game has to stop, and the GOP has to get their head out of their behind not attack Donald Trump, but figure out what Donald Trump did in 2016 to win the working class vote, because that's the missing piece of the puzzle. That's why Democrats are capturing the Rust Belt. But anyways, hopefully this video was semi-coherent. Hopefully I got my point across. You guys know me. I'm never going to push any doom, any gloom. I'm going to keep it positive, always moving forward, looking at what the issues are. You know, to grow as a human being, you have to break yourself down and build yourself back up. Look at yourself, warts and all, all your faults. Fix your issues, fix the issues, move forward, and always focus on improving. It wasn't the red tsunami people were hoping for. It wasn't a blue wave either. It was kind of just, eh, stagnant. The status quo, things kind of remain the same, except for GOP gains in the House. It's still technically a win, even though it's not the win you were looking for. Take what you take and figure out how to move forward and build on the small gains. The 2022 midterm may have not been a referendum on President Joe Biden, but the 2024 election will certainly be a referendum on sleepy disaster Joe Biden. That's what I got for you guys, though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.